So, I'm super excited to be here and speak about a subject that's very, very dear to my heart. And the subject that I'm speaking about is, as Dragos introduced, that only rich people can afford a car, a self-driving car. And that is like the big, big myth that's going to happen. A lot of people are afraid of technology. They think that when self-driving cars will come, we'll lose jobs and it will be like a bad world where nobody has employment anymore, where cars are going to kill us. And I'm going to t teach you and tell you how this is going to enter a new era of prosperity and how this will change cities forever and bring us like, into a new world that we can hardly imagine nowadays. So let me start by the introducing the history of transportation. So in the 19th century, one big change was done to cities, which was the introduction of the elevator. And the elevator changed towns forever. Imagine a city like New York or uh, Tokyo without an elevator. I mean, nobody would be able to walk like 100 floors high and like, enjoy these mega cities. And one thing that very little people know about elevators is actually until the early, early 20th century, you needed to have a driver's license to ride an elevator. Pretty crazy, huh? I don't think any of you has a driver's license for an elevator nowadays. Why was that? Because when you had an elevator, you had a lever, and it was very difficult to hit the exact floor. And I mean, if you did it wrong, you could go too high, and you could bump in the ceiling and crash the elevator, you could go too low, you could step out of the elevator, and you could practically die in an elevator. So it was a very, very dangerous thing. I don't think any of us is afraid of dying in an elevator nowadays anymore. And that was like a big, big change. So like in some time it was like obvious that you need to have a driver for an elevator and it changed to be like completely absurd concept. The next big change which we had in transportation was the introduction of cars. And they have like been an amazing tool for freedom, both personally and economically. When the cars were introduced, people treated them like a replacement for horse carriages without a horse in front of that. But then later on, it went something completely different. I mean, by the beginning, it was a tool for the rich, and now everybody has a car. While in the beginning, they have like really transformed cities and allowed them, nowadays, they're really like a problem because people are stuck in traffic jams and losing time, but they have been an amazing tool for prosperity, which was a big change in transportation. And then, of course, you had the introduction of the airplane. In the early 20th century, this allowed long-distance travel. And without the airplane, globalization as we know it wouldn't have been possible. I mean, it would be impossible to go to New York, San Francisco, Tokyo and do business without the airplane. But then the even more scary thing is that like, for the last 100 years, nothing fundamental has changed in transportation. Right now, if you take a 100-year-old car, you can still fundamentally ride on today's roads. So nothing big has changed. And that's what's very, very sad. And that's what's going to change massively with a self-driving car. In the 21st century, the self-driving car will be that defining principle, like the introduction of the car, the elevator, or the airplane has been. And that's like what I'm super, super excited to have the luxury to work on. Um, and show you a little bit why this is going to change the world forever as we know it. So, the first thing is that cars kill 1.2 million people every year and injure tens of millions of people. Imagine that, 1.2 million people. In civilized worlds, more people are killed by cars than by guns. And, I mean, except you're American, you probably think it's crazy to carry a gun. But I don't think any of you thinks it's crazy to own a driver's license. And I would say that you should abolish driver's license before gun licenses because they're way more dangerous. They give killing machines into the hands of like millions of people. That's crazy. And like that's what we need to avoid, right? If you can like make that completely safe, like it's safe to ride an elevator nowadays, then you can save over the next century like over 100 million lives. So that is a big impact. Then the second big thing is cars are polluting our planet. If you've ever been to China, and then you see that there's like smog everywhere. And if you can make those cars go all electric and with green energy, then you can also really like uh, reduce global warming and all the bad impacts to health of what people have. So that's two big changes. But then there's also big economic impact. Cars are like a big wasteful resource. You can make self-driving cars 80% cheaper than regular cars. Why is that? Because your car is used an average 5 to 10% of the time. 90 to 95% of the time your car is standing idle and not being used. This is a massive waste. And this is both like the resources which it takes to build the cars, to maintain the cars. This is just like one of the most wasteful resources which we have. And if you can share cars, that we all use the same cars like a pool of taxis and we don't utilize them, then it will be 80% cheaper, which will mean for us, all of us, probably we have the luxury of having a car, but it will allow a lot of people in emerging economies to have access to a personal car and allow the same thing what the American dream with a car was back then, to have your freedom of movement. And this will allow a whole new class of people to have that freedom. Another big part is, 
Self-driving cars use 80% less space than traditional cars. Why is that? Because humans are horrible drivers. We need a lot of distance between cars. And like in the future, the self-driving cars, they can drive bumper to bumper. They can bundle multiple cars to one vehicle and like uh, group them together to a small minibus. So imagine how the cities look like if you free up 80% of the space used from cars nowadays. So that's like a massive disruption. This disruption will come about in two stages. Similar like other technology has been introduced, first it's like a linear shift and a gradual introduction. So first what we'll see, and that we'll see in the next five years, we'll see self-driving taxis. So that you can call a taxi, which will be a pretty traditional taxi, just that there's no dude sitting in front driving you around, and obviously much cheaper. But the second stage, which I'm actually much, much more excited, is the stage two when we completely reimagine what a car is. When you talk about pods and platoons. Imagine nowadays you're getting up early in the morning and you're like late to work and then you're grumpy because you didn't get your morning coffee and then a ton of people honk at you on your way to work and you're very aggressive already in the morning. In the future, imagine you call a self-driving pod that has a nice coffee and a toast waiting for you. You have your breakfast on the way to work, nobody honks at you because there's no other idiot drivers on the road. So you're coming very relaxed to work. Or imagine that you want to go to Paris and you go to bed tonight in Cluj, you call a self-driving car with a bed in it, you go to sleep and the next morning you wake up in Paris for a fantastic coffee over there. That's the kind of concept which will be enabled if we reimagine what cars mean. So what you will see is that cities will be pedestrian again. Imagine this is how cities were built. Our cities in Europe were never built to be operated and filled by cars. They were built in a way that they are nice for pedestrians. Imagine you can sit in Cluj in the city center, enjoy a coffee without all the noise around you. Because the self-driving cars are all electric, they are not honking at each other, they are not producing any pollution. You can sit there and really enjoy the city again. Imagine what quality of life change that is. And then there's another point. So, since I'm not in the medical field like some other speakers before and I can't help in curing cancer, I'm at least happy that I can work on that. How is that more important than a cure for cancer? Well, very simple. The average American spends two hours a day in a car. So that's considered if you have like 16 hours a day that you're awake, that's 10% of your awake time that you waste your life at. So it's like if you give these two hours back where people can read, where people can like talk with their family or whatever they want to do or have breakfast, in the car, then you give them 10% of their life back. That's equivalent to a 10% life extension. No medical cure in the world can like, be equivalent to that. And then finally, what I promised you. Imagine your personal chauffeur. And actually, I promised you one personal chauffeur, but the amazing thing is you can have as much as you want. Imagine you want to get your kids to school, and in the morning you drop them in a self-driving car, they go to school, and it only unlocks when the teacher comes and gets them. Imagine what kind of better life this creates for you. Imagine if you have like blind people that are not able to take part in social life because they can't easily go to the city or so on. They can in the future call their personal chauffeur, bring them in the city center and they can part of social life again. Imagine elderly people. When you want to see your grandparents and they're not able to drive in the future, you just send them a self-driving car, pick them up to your place and have, have breakfast together with them. Imagine how nice this world is going to be. And that's what I want to close with, because I've seen a lot of people are very, very afraid of innovation and they see that like the future is very bleak and like costing us all our jobs. But what I want to urge you all is that instead of fearing the future, we should all work together to build the future that we want to have and build a world for our children that's better than the world that we grew up with. And I think that's very possible. Thank you very much.